The two gymnasiums built by Kenzo Tangi in Tokyo for the 1964 Olympic Games. When Tokyo was chosen to organize the 1964 Olympic Games, the city picked up the threads of its past. The 1940 Games that it was originally selected to host had been cancelled because of the Second World War. For Japan, defeated and occupied by the Americans for seven years, and now emerging from its economic reconstruction, the challenge was a huge one. It had to prove to the world that it was a great modern nation. The event was both a form of revenge and a symbol. For the 163 Olympic sports, five new stadiums will be built in Tokyo. Two gymnasiums, covered stadiums for swimming and basketball, built in the heart of the city, would become the architectural emblem of the Games. The man entrusted with their design embodied modern architecture in Japan. He had built the Peace Park building in Hiroshima, a communication center in Kofu, and a cultural center in Nishinan. His name was Kenzo Tangi, and like every Japanese architect, he had numerous questions about the relationship between tradition and modernity. During the reconstruction period, we came up against the problem of rooting modern architecture in the realities of Japanese life. We felt that in the world of architecture, these realities were particularly meaningful and that through them we could perceive the weight of tradition. Tradition often has decadent tendencies that lead to repetition and formalization. For it to be a true source of inspiration, for tradition to live on, it must constantly be destroyed. The site chosen for the construction of the two gymnasiums was steeped in history. Before the war, a Mitsubishi factory built engines for the planes that would subsequently bomb Pearl Harbor. In 1945, the American army built housing there for the families of soldiers in the occupying forces. The place changed its name and became known as Washington Heights. Bordered by the subway tracks and the Yoyogi wood that surrounds one of the oldest temples in Tokyo, between the neighborhoods of Shinjuku and Shibuya, this was a prestigious setting. The American army housing would be transformed into the Olympic Village. A sports arena is a show space. Athletes perform there for spectators. Fundamentally, it's quite simple. An empty space with seating around it and a roof above. For the big gymnasium, everything was planned on a huge scale. Initially designed for 25,000 spectators, the limit was subsequently set at 13,500, divided between two symmetrical grandstands. In the middle were the swimming and diving pools that are today covered by 4,000 square meters of flooring. At either end, separating the grandstands, a wall and a concrete mast pierced by the vents of the air conditioning and heating systems are the only reminders of brutalism, the raw display of material and its function that Kenzo Tangi embodied during the 1950s in Japan.
Tangi's innovations are visible in the roofing of this huge stadium. A true architectural feat, over an area more than 120 meters wide and 125 meters long, there are neither pillars nor posts. Everyone can see everything. However, originally the idea came from the world of civil engineering, a variation on the theme of the suspension bridge. With its pilings, cables, and a roadway. Inside the big gymnasium, two steel cables, anchored in concrete, pass through the tops of the two masts. When cables are held taut like this, they can bear heavy loads. Here, they support the weight of the roof, rather than that of a bridge roadway. Tange designed a concave structure for the big gymnasium, a sort of inverted dome. The sides of the roof curve into the interior of the building, a direct result of the suspension bridge structure. There were also economic reasons for this. The volume of air to heat or condition is less important and the acoustics have improved. Attached to the two main cables, curved metal beams are welded to the steel plates of the roofing and resemble the veins of a leaf. Suspended above the pools, this leaf is the roof. The second gymnasium designed for the basketball competitions is smaller, 3,000 spectators, Tangi adopted the same construction principles. A single taut cable twists around a mast. The steel ribbing is attached to this cable and holds up the roof. Like a cloth tied to a pole, the roof forms a circle. Strange concrete staples link the roof beams and the concrete structure of the floors at regular intervals. This is the point where metal and concrete meet. Concrete forms the lower part of the buildings. The arches of the ground floor, the line of the windows, and the slope of the grandstands that can be seen from the exterior. Everything seems to teeter on the verge of imbalance. The base of the building is smaller than its roof. This results in the image of a flying saucer taking off. The metal roof seems to float, while the concrete of the lower floors undulates like a wave. All the structural tensions are expressed. The form translates the construction requirements. The functional is beautiful. However, some people claim that in Japan today, the quest for beauty is harmful. Maybe but we feel that architecture that meets the needs of everyday life must be beautiful. And thanks to this beauty, these same architectural spaces will condition the men and women who live in them. In this way, I hereby declare that only the beautiful is functional. For the small gymnasium, there were no pools to dig. The building was destined to host the basketball competition. Here, the outer crown of windows rises and then falls again. 
The grandstand accentuates this perception of motion. Eight rows of seats on one side, 19 rows on the other. Everything is off center, a result of the positioning of the concrete mass that supports the whole building, placed outside the circle of grandstands where the spectators sit. The final undulation of the building is the one that allows the spectators in, as if the architect were pulling back the metal curtain of the roof to create a space to receive the general public. The grandstands and the entrance hall, two areas with differing functions covered by the continued flow of the roof. The impression of a taut sail is heightened by the harbour-like image of the big gymnasium, where the architect chose to hold back the sloping roofs above the entrances with strange metal tie beams, an architecture of cranes and mooring posts that hold the roof down before the wind carries it off. The two gymnasiums follow the same construction principles, yet the small gymnasium isn't a scale model of the big one. The architect has created two specific shapes, a large ellipse and a small circle, reaching out to each other through the volume of their entrance halls. Access to the two buildings is along a broad avenue that forms a right angle. A second avenue opens up access to the south, towards the Shibuya neighborhood. This promenade seems unremarkable. However, its layout is decisive since above the sloping terrain, it levels out the artificial plane that allows more than 15,000 people to access to the two buildings easily. This is the common plane. Beneath the longer drive, the one running from east to west, at the point where the slope in the terrain was the steepest, the architect created an underground gallery, linking the two gymnasiums and housing all the secondary functions of the buildings. The administrative offices, the restaurant, and the training pool, the only swimming pool still in use today.
In the roof of the small gymnasium, the ribbing rises up to the top of the mast and winds around a glass canopy. Inside, the roof made up of wooden slates set between the curved uprights seems to be drawn up by the light from the canopy where steel beams carry the strain of the whole roof towards the concrete mast where the curve of the main cable is at its peak, where the strain is the most intense. A node of metal, balls and sockets and steel tie beams united against the light. While the flow of the crown of windows in the small gymnasium looks like a flying saucer, the contours of the roofing of the big gymnasium call to mind the prow of a ship. A functional gesture that uses the volume thus created to allow air and light into the gymnasium. A most certainly an artistic one that resolves the ascending flow of the ribbing of the two roofs with a contradictory movement that accentuates the length of the building. For the pedestrian on the promenade between the two gymnasiums, it's simpler. Against the city, a large ship rides at anchor. Inside, Kenzo Tangi created a new paradox. At the point where the two great slopes of the roof culminate, where the tensions in the construction are the greatest, he parted the two load-bearing cables to let in the light. The stress of the frame subsides. The space isn't enclosed. I opted for this structure because of the potential that I saw in it for making an open form. Since the beginning we have felt the need to open up to welcome and ease the movement of large crowds. We could tell that it wasn't just a matter of hydrodynamics, but that it also had a psychological significance. We wanted to eliminate the feeling of enclosure beneath the roofs and in the grandstands. Everything is movement, everything is curved. There isn't a straight line in the volumes of these buildings. The slope of the ceilings, the circular flow of the grandstands and tiers, the motion sketched out by the windows. Everything is designed to bring bodies together and to lead the eye towards other bodies. The rejection of the straight line is a first step in learning to share. An Olympic stadium is also a way of being together. The space is the field of human functions. Man physically occupies the space. He communicates within the space. He forms himself within it. However, the most important aspect lies in the fact that the space has its own metaphysical meaning. In creating a form, we express a physical function, but we also give it a symbolic value. In a city of chaotic urban planning, Kenzo Tangi's buildings do not symbolize sport. His goal wasn't illustration or narration. The symbol lies elsewhere, in the forms caught in mid-air, in the sculptural power of the two buildings. In exposing the dynamics of the structure, he tackled the paradox of the architect tempted by movement. His work is that of a sculptor.
How is it possible to fill a 13,000-seat gymnasium? From its inauguration in 1964, the authorities tried to foresee the post-Olympic period and thought that the pool would become a skating rink. Today, the building contains neither a pool nor a skating rink. The big gymnasium is only financially viable for major concerts or national aerobics meetings. The small gymnasium is still a basketball arena. From time to time for a fashion show, temporary architecture converses with the original design. The two gymnasiums now ride at anchor in the Tokyo of the third millennium. Beyond their expressive power that remains intact, they embody the ideas of Kenzo Tangi, for whom architecture must never be dissociated from sculpture. <laughs> 